Hey, what's up? This is David Breen, the creator of Furious and Friends, and this is a little clip from the cartoon where Furious and Emo are playing video games. The character on the left, Mr. Furious, has got full body motion capture going on and face, and Emo on the right has only got the face and thumbs going on, so he looks a little static. So I'm going to show you how to apply full body motion capture to your character your 3D character in 3D Studio Max using iClone motion capture software and we'll get Emo moving around a little bit. So here's iClone. First thing we want to do is some general uh, they like to call it housekeeping I guess. Make We just want to double check some parameters and make sure that the program isn't gonna do some weird things to us. So let's first go down here to this time settings panel. And 1800 frames by default means about 30 seconds. Now, I don't know about you, but I want more than that. So I'm going to do 10,000 because you can always cut off what you don't need later. Hit OK. Now, here's one of those things I'm telling you about. When you set that, you can see this little blue arrow moved all the way over here. That's because this is the original 1800 frames, but we want all 10,000 so it's gonna stop recording right here even though you change this so you gotta click and drag your blue arrow all the way over it's just one of those little things that will hang you up later and you'll be like why didn't it why didn't it do what I wanted it to okay so now that, now that that is taken out of the equation we go up to actor non-static human under template double click on the dummy and this is our dummy that will uh, display our motion capture as we record it in real time. Make sure foot contact is checked. That way your character's feet will stay on the ground. In this tutorial, I'm not going to go over that. I'm just going to show how to do the upper part of the body since Emo here is only sitting and not standing. So I don't need to do his feet. Now we go to animation, motion, with our avatar selected, go to device mocap, and this is our device console where you can switch between full body capture or upper body capture. So we're going to do upper body, everything you leave the same, hit connect, and now we want to open up the mocap device plugin. I had it connected but by default it will not be connected so hit connect and now we've got our motion depth sensor information going on make sure body command is checked that allows you to use your your uh, your hands to actually start and stop the recording and now that we have this connected and we have this connected both the mocap device plugin and the device console within iClone itself, we can start to do a capture. We've got the blue arrow all the way over, 10,000 frames. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you how this works. Just back up a little bit, put your hands up. It counts down. And then it gives you the option to record and preview. So I'm going to move my hand over, record. And now, it's not going to let me do it because I've got the uh, timeline all the way at the end. So make sure you move that back to the beginning. And then now we can do it. Go to record. Okay. So now for this, I just want to put his hands kind of out in front of him. And act like I'm holding the controller and just kind of move around a little bit move forward like he's kind of playing a game and, uh, you know the, the the Xbox Connect and software like this it's not it's not like high end super high end motion capture stuff going on here but what it's really good for is exactly what I'm doing now is just really subtle movement just to bring your characters to life so they don't look like they're just sitting there and uh, a lot of the more extreme cartoony 
pose to pose animation can be done by you know hand and uh, but simple stuff like this motion capture has a place definitely has its place so that's probably good there now we can go into here hit space and stop it close that close that hey psh. Oh, my cats just came in hold on there's about a cat fight's about to break out okay so we've got the information we want and we want to trim out everything else like the beginning and the end so click on the show timeline F3 and you want to click on the object related track to make sure that's checked by default it usually is sometimes it gets unchecked you can drop the project one we just want the dummy object related track we click on motion and the dark gray one is the actual motion capture and we can click this little white bar here on the end and drag it out to get the whole thing and as you can see all the information we have only covers up to here so we look at what frame that is it is frame 3813 so you can just go in here and say 3813 and that will give us a nice uh, full timeline of our animation from beginning to end now if we want to cut off some of this we just move to the part where we want to start right here and it's as simple as right clicking on the timeline and hitting break and then you delete the part you don't need, drag it to the beginning, go to where it ends, about right there, same deal, break, delete, and now we can go ahead and clean that up some more, 3328, 3328. All right, we've got our motion capture. We've got the very subtle movements So now, let's bring this into 3D Exchange. And this little program here is just kind of a, a middleman between, between programs. We've got to bring our information in here first, and then from here we can export it into 3DS Max. So first, we want to grab our actor, our dummy, and bring our dummy inside. Simple as clicking and dragging. And then we go to the animation tab, motion. Make sure motion is selected. If you don't, because you see this plus button here, if you have something else selected, the plus button will not show up. Well, for hands and facial animation, it does, but we don't have any hands or facial animation. We just have the motion. So click plus, and it will add this timeline, this motion we just made. It will add that to the timeline. So motion two, we'll call that uh, David, whatever. And then we can drag that onto our dummy. And now we have our motion capture information here in 3D Exchange. And now if we want to edit this further, we have the performer editor we can just click on our motion library here on the right click on David add to perform and here's our clip and then we can type in our start and end times here and that's what it will actually export or you can just drag the blue arrow pretty simple so now we want to export this as a BVH. BVHs are amazingly really good for the CAT system within 3DS Max. Make sure Reset Bone Offset is checked. Put it into a folder. Hit OK. And now it's exporting the animation. Done. Now let's open up Emo. And we want to put that information on Emo, but only the top half, not the bottom half. So the way this works is we go to the Layer Manager, 
within the character animation toolkit. This is the animation system that 3ds Max uses. We want to create a new layer below this that the motion capture will be loaded onto. So we just go to Browse for Cat or Motion Capture Clip. Go to your folder. Open that up. And this stuff here should all be fine because what's going to happen is you can actually rescale dynamically your motion capture information later. So you don't have to worry about it too much. Just hit OK. And it's going to load. Be right back. All right, that took a while. 3,000 frames is quite a bit. So now if we look at it, you can see there's some movement, but obviously some things need to happen. <laughs> so it's not perfect right out of the box. You're not going to get a perfect match, but there are just a few simple things you can do to fix this. First of all, we had the, uh, I made a custom uh, layer here for the actual mocap. So if we hide his body, you can see that this little guy here is a, a system of bones, and this is what was imported. And so by putting this on its own layer, you can easily hide just that. And as you can see, that's what drives it. What we want to do is there's this little box that comes with it called the dummy David. <laughs> I'm the dummy. And we move the dummy around and it will move everything else, the character and all. And all this information is all being stored on this dummy David motion capture layer. So if we take the global weight all the way down, you can see the emo moves back to the layer before it. We move it back up and he attaches himself to the motion capture. Now we don't want the waist down, so what we can do is go to his uh, helpers here on his thighs and take the local weight down. And what that will do is it will basically, what it's saying is for this bone all the way down the chain, ignore the motion capture information and go to the previous layer to where he's sitting. I'll show you that in a second. So if I move them both to local, that's what it looks like. Now watch it as I take the global weight of the entire layer, you will see how he settles in the plate. Turn the global weight all the way up. Now the reason why he's not totally sitting is because the pelvis is actually what needs to be on the local weight. So now he's all the way down, and he's bending way forward because the rest of the motion capture is, is out of place. So if we just move that back, and I'd say also scale it up so that it looks about the same, you know, just kind of place him where he should be. And that's pretty good. Get back a little bit. Yeah, like that. All right, now we can go ahead and hide that layer. And now we have from the waist down is all being driven by the layer I had where he's just sitting there. And from the waist up is all motion capture. So you can see he's moving around, his body's moving around a little bit. And his head's moving. The only problem is that it doesn't look like he's holding a controller because when we imported this, it uh, just kind of threw the hands around. But if we go into here, make sure you got local. And these hands are both IK, which means they're dri the entire hand is driven, the entire arm is driven by the helper at the point of the hand. So if I rotate it, you can see everything kind of dynamically moves around. So let's bring the hand in place about where it should be.
Now if the uh, if your character's wrist gets all twisted up like that, it's usually because the elbow just needs to be turned a little bit to straighten it out. So that looks good. So I just took a minute to move the right hand into place. And now what's going on here is we've got the the controller is linked to the left hand, so it moves with the left hand, but the right hand is moved by the, the motion capture, and so it's not completely holding the controller as it should, it just moves around. So what we want to do is we want to attach this right hand to the controller so that it's driven by the controller's mo movement. So to do that, the pivot point here is very important because that's where it's going to try to grab it. So we got to go to the uh, show me hierarchy tab, effect pivot only, and then move the pivot to about there. And you can move it here again some more to fine tune it here in a second. So you got it where you want it. So now what you got to do is put a rotation and position constraint on to the controller. So to do that we need a local adjustment layer. A local adjustment basically makes it so that it only adjusts what you want it to and everything else passes through. So right now it doesn't do anything. So that means the animation still works. If you put a absolute layer on there it basically takes a snapshot freeze frame of what you already have and it becomes static. So you want the local layer then we go to assign controller and on your adjustment layer, which is at the bottom here, you go to position. Click on this uh, assign controller button and go to position constraint. Okay. And then you want to make sure that keep initial offset is checked. Add position target. And then you click on the controller. Now we go to rotation, same deal. Go to orientation constraint. Okay. Orientation and rotation mean the same thing in this uh, instance. So now keep initial offset. Check that again. Add orientation target. Click the controller. And now you're good. So now when you move it about, you'll see that it moves as it should with the controller. And we've got a nice little subtle movement going on. Take those helpers out. And that elbow looks a little funky, but that can always be played with. Go to uh, turn the helpers back on. This guy, we just have to rotate it to where it looks right. That looks pretty good. That is one thing. One of the hardest things in 3D animation is getting the getting the joints to look right. But once they look right, they'll stay right for the most part. And this one I might want to push down a little bit. Yeah, that one looks pretty good. And now that everything's in place. Unfortunately, my video card isn't top notch right now, but you can see that it's moving around and it's doing doing its thing. Now, if I unhide emo, you see the whole scene, and both characters are now playing the game. And we got some subtle movement. All right, so that's a wrap. That is how you do the motion capture. Thanks for watching, everybody.